focus as we embark upon the year end festivities and everyone is actually getting into the holiday mood there is one company that is gearing up with full gusto and that company is mahindra holidays uh, let's pull up that counter on the screens and see what the stock is doing uh, in trade overall strong moves today as well uh, let's pull up a ytd or even a one month chart to understand what's happened uh, in the quarter there you go this year uh, we have seen some smart moves but it's been a slightly volatile ride uh, to discuss more in terms of where uh, the company goes and what's in store. We have Kavinder Singh who joins us. Kavinder, uh, good morning and welcome to the show and a pleasure to speak to you after really long and, uh, you know, overall in terms of the outlook. Yes, pleasure is mine too. Kavinder, my first question coming to you is how has the World Cup, the festive and the holiday season been so far? If you have to be a talk about the third quarter because we're pretty much at the lag end now. Yeah. So, as you know, uh, our business is a membership business. We have 300,000 approximately member families, 290,000 to be precise. Uh, we are, uh, we have a very strong business model, a very resilient business model. And we are seeing occupancies which are very robust in this quarter. Approximately 84 to 85% occupancies in December, we'll probably touch 90%. So we are seeing a very significant uptick in our business. Families come to holiday because they are members at our resorts. And our resorts are obviously now running full towards the end of the year. So this is uh, as, good as, as good a festive season as it gets. Strong occupancy coming in towards the lag end of the year as well. Uh, overall, from here on, what's the plan expected to look like with regards to where room additions, member additions go? So as far as the uh, room additions go, we have gone on record that we would like to double our room count from 5,000 keys to about 10,000 keys. Uh, what we did probably in the last 26, 27 years, we would like to do it in the next six years or so. Uh, the capital expenditure plans are already in place. We have about 835 crores of capex in play to deliver 690 rooms in the next one to two years. If I were to look at the movement forward, we are aiming to take this 835 crore number to about approximately 2000 crore as we move into the next year. Our aim would be to very, very quickly step up our run rate of room additions which is roughly 375 to 400 next year you will see much higher run rate than this number and as far as capital expenditure plans are concerned i already outlined that we have at this moment of time two greenfield projects that are underway one in ratnagiri another is uh, in theok uh, one is in maharashtra and other one is in himachal and we have an expansion project going on in himachal and then you have few other projects which are going to be lined up for uh, breaking the ground soon. We are also working very closely with the governments, state governments, PPP model. Uh, we have signed an MOU with uh, Uttarakhand government, 1,000 crore investment. We have identified four pieces of land already with Orissa government near Chilka Lake. We have been in principally awarded a land of 50 acres. Again, the work is going on with the Orissa government. So you will see a lot of action in the PPP space. And that is something that we are now seeing a lot of traction happening in that area as well. Right. So, Kavinder, with all of this said and done, this actually outlines your CAPEX plans, what the number of rooms could look like, what you're doing with the government as well in PPP projects. Uh, taking this into consideration by how much do you think that your member additions could look, what, what would that look like? Uh, so, as I mentioned, the CAPEX plans are robust. Our room additions are obviously robust. And as far as member additions are concerned, that's a question that you asked. We have seen significant momentum. As you can see that at, at the H1 level, we have grown our member additions by about 17% on YOY basis. We see the momentum continuing on the member additions as well, because when we add inventory in a way, we are signaling the market that we are confident of adding members. And therefore you will see soon, soon see us crossing 300,000. That will happen sooner than later. And we are obviously, we have launched new products. As you know that we have launched a 15-year product, we have launched a four-year product. So we are seeing again momentum in the member editions as well. We have digitalization of the member journey on the cards, which will help member to buy timeshare online. So there are a lot of actions that are taking place to ensure that the member editions keep pace with the inventory editions. Okay. 
so that's an interesting one to watch out for uh, one more thing kavinder that i want to talk to you about is the turnaround in hcro right now that is something which is helping as well what's the plan ahead so the turnaround in hcro actually happened last year when we delivered 5 million euro a bit up Uh, this year we are going to deliver more than that. If you look at quarter three, quarter three performance on a YOY basis is going to be significantly superior than last year. Uh, same time, so we are seeing, despite the effects of Russia-Ukraine war, despite the fact that uh, the Europe is having its own problems with respect to interest rates and consumer sentiment, the timeshare sales is quite robust. We are seeing timeshare sales moving up very, very well. Yes, there is a bit of a pressure on the consumer spends. In the spa hotels that we have, but at an overall level, the even in the last quarter, which is a seasonal quarter, we delivered 1.6 million euro EBITDA. So we are very confident of crossing 5 million euro EBITDA, which is for the full year. And so there is a turnaround which is taking place, and we are getting as days pass by even more optimistic into the future with reference to holiday club resorts, despite the macroeconomic situation not being so good. Okay, so in terms of recouping the investments, there, what's the, uh, you know, what are you targeting? So, you know, we are not financial investors in that company. Uh, we have taken a strategic view when we invested in that company. We believe that uh, Timeshare, that too in Scandinavian market, they are leaders. Uh, there are not many uh, Timeshare players in that market. These are the holiday club resorts is a very respected player. We do believe that over a period of time, we will be able to work out some synergies with India and the holiday club resorts, where a lot of Indians, after having done Europe travel, would look at Scandinavia. So we have a long-term view on this investment, and we believe that you know we are in the business for the long term. And since the turnaround is happening, it's giving us even more confidence. Right. So Kavinder, with all of this said and done, right? How are you expected to end FY24? That's number one. And what's the key milestone from a growth perspective that you would like to actually achieve? So, the FY24, in my view, would have one uh, big thing that we have uh, sort of, I would say, would have achieved as we end FY24. You know, we were, uh, you know, let's say, going at a steady rate of 250, 300 rooms. Then we stepped it up to 350, 400. Now we are saying we are going to go from 5,000 to 10,000 rooms, and that decision was taken in FY24. And we started moving extremely fast, both in terms of the greenfield projects, expansion of existing resorts, as well as also leasing and acquisitions. By the way, as we speak, there are a few resorts that are you know under acquisition and the PPP projects. So I would really uh, see this uh, you know year as an inflection point in terms of creating supply. You know, in India. The leisure market is very underserved. It's only 28,000 rooms in the leisure market, while even smaller countries like Bangkok or even uh, a city like Bangkok or Dubai actually have higher, uh, you know, uh, leisure accommodation. So we believe that India is an underserved market. We have taken a call to expand 5,000 to 10,000 keys with significant amount of capex outlay. You know, in our business model, we don't need to borrow. We have 1176 crores rupees of cash available with us. And we have very, very confident of maintaining occupancies. And these are the two typical problems in the hospitality space. So we believe that this year is an inflection point. We are moving into a very high trajectory in terms of supply. As I said, next year, we will do add much more than 400 rooms that we have been adding. And as a result of which the member additions are also accelerating, new product lines have opened up, as I said, 15 year and four year product. We are seeing momentum there. So this is an year where we have set the ball rolling in terms of momentum of the business is concerned. And I believe this is this is a momentum which is likely to continue for at least five to ten years. So that's a very uh, positive commentary comment that, that I'm, I'm getting from you. One thing I want to ask you is with regards to the extensive MOUs that you've been signing with state governments, right? AP, around three to four, three resorts, if I'm not mistaken. Uttarakhand, you've done already five resorts and plus plus. How much do you think these PPP models will be a part of the revenue contribution and how much do you think you will be able to grow it to? So, uh, you know, the way we look at it, that for us, supply has been the constraint. So when we move from 5,000 to 10,000 keys, out of 5,000 keys, how much can we get out of the PPP? Because the PPP models actually, in a way, serve 
two very big purposes. One, we are creators of destinations. You would appreciate that, you know, when PPP models come, the government wants to develop newer destinations. Since we are the creator of destinations, we opened a new destination in Chancheli in Himachal in the last year, and the, the, the resort is doing extremely well. So the governments want us to actually popularize new destinations, which is the need of the nation and of the state. So to that extent, we are fulfilling that purpose. Equally, we get an opportunity to, at a low cost, you know, a, a resort, which we are able to create faster in a newer destination. So when I look at the, uh, you know, these two advantages, so I'm saying that if out of these 5,000 keys, if I can get 2,000 keys or thereabouts, from the PPP or even more, that would be quite helpful. Right, so I think that's something that everyone will watch out for as well. Thank you, Kavinder, so much for joining us on the show. Always a pleasure to speak to you and get insights from you, specifically with regards uh, to the holiday season as well. Thank you for joining us. So that's uh, Kavinder Singh of Mahindra Holidays, clearly highlighting how the festive season as well as how the holiday season is expected to pan out, the growth plans and the way the capex is expected to increase from here on, taking the demand into consideration. But let's quickly slip into a short break. Up next, uh, we have Rahul Guha, the Managing Director and CEO at Thyrocare, who joins us to discuss about price hike plans and how they plan to tackle the rising COVID cases and if that is really the situation. Please stay tuned to NDTV Profit.